Hi, girl. Oh, my goodness. The kids aren't up. I want them to do the chores. I always feel bad. Oh, there comes more. Because I want the kids to do the chores, and now the goats are hollering at me because they hear me. And the chickens are following me because they want food. Oh, look at how dry it is. This is like normal grass. We need rain. Pray for rain. Please pray for rain. Minnesota needs rain. Our farmers need rain. Desperately. See? Fence post. That's how I can open the gates <clears throat> and still hold things at the same time. So, what I thought I'd do is bring you into my, ooh, ooh, there we go, bring you into my happy place and give you a little early season tour on the garden. Some of it looks great. Some of it really needs to be weeded and mulched. Just how it is. Some of it still needs to be planted. Like I still need to put down some of my lettuces and my marigolds. But the 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 other stuff, the important stuff is done. So that I am happy about. Now I just have a long line of chickens that are just everywhere. Because what I did is this is woven wire, this stuff right here, but this is chicken wire. And I went around the entire outside perimeter of the fence, if you can see that, and lined it with chicken wire. Now I still have one side to do, I keep putting you guys really close, one side to do <clears throat> way over here, because they sometimes go into the goat pen and then figure their way in, which is fine, because that used to be where the coop was and we wanted them getting in and out because it was fenced off. Their run was fenced off within the garden. Oh, it's a heron. I don't know. Can you? There it is. I think that was a heron. Ah, uh, look at chicken, <laughs> except for a bird. <clears throat> so anyways, a little bit of tour here. So, Behind me is my Egyptian walking onions. They are very prolific. Uh, a very dear friend of mine gave me a few of the onion heads, which are basically the seeds. And I planted them in the fall, uh, covered them in a thick mulch. Basically, I think I used... Um, uh, goat bedding. Goat bedding is pretty cool. And it was older. Anyways, so covered it. And this is the second year they've come back. And they're called walking onions. And the reason why is because the bulb of the onion grows on the top. And then eventually they get heavy. This is not what they look like when they get heavy, because obviously it's not heavy. They get heavy and replant themselves back into the ground if you don't if you don't harvest the top so that they, they're not at that point now but you can see they're starting to you can see this looks like a teeny tiny little onion <clears throat> and you can also eat these scapes and the greens they're fantastic um it's like beautiful seasoning and oniony flavor that comes back every year why not have them so far, they haven't really moved outside of this little area, but I don't need more than this. Um, and I'm going to, and, and once my patch gets a little bit more established, because it's a little bit younger, I'm just going to keep sharing the love. So this is the chicken's new coop, by the way, right outside the goat barn. We sectioned it off and we're trying to train them. You can see the little door. We're trying to train them to go in and out in, in the, at night and out in the morning. Maybe they're starting to get the hang of it. We had to chase them in there last night. Not chase them, but put them in there. Okay, so carrying on. I'm going to turn you guys around because 
it's just easier. And then hopefully I don't make it all, all Jack Sparrow. Okay. All right. We are turned around now. This, these six plants right here, these are, are all things that I started from seed. These are uh, poblano pepper plants. So if you've never had a poblano, highly recommend it, especially if you're a little bit more heat sensitive like some of my family is. Uh, we are in the north in Scandahuvian country for goodness sakes. So this uh, is a very mild but very delicious pepper. Makes very good for stuffing. We really, really love it over the fire with venison and cream cheese. Uh, this also is for those heat sensitive people. And I like heat, but I don't like heat that burns your mouth off. This is called a heatless habanero or a habanada. All these came from either Baker Creek or originally from Baker Creek and I saved the seeds. So that's what they look like. Um, and the mulching that I have is goat bedding from last year. <clears throat> so let's see here if I can remember this correctly. And the rest of these are... Okay, nope. So some of these are shishito. I think these are shishitos. No, this one is seed saved jalapeno. You can't, that's not gonna. But this one I can just tell by the shape. That's a shishito, that's a shishito, and that's a shishito. And I, yep, that one is as well. So I think I have one, two, three, four shishitos, and then two jalapenos. <clears throat> we don't need to pickle. Uh, can the jalapenos this year. So I only grew two because you do get a lot. Um, but I wanted to try the other shishito peppers um, really badly because I've seen some of them in other videos. Um, and But I did plant some because I like to use them in my own salsa. So here is the very, 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 very weedy patch of onions. <clears throat> now you can see um, uh, this is an onion right here. This is a weed. <laughs> onion weed. But, um, it won't take more than an hour or so to get through this weedy patch. Especially if I have a couple helpers. So, and you can see I, I had to move the mulch off to the side so I could plant them. So I'm going to weed them and then sprinkle them with mulch and then this won't happen as bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. So hopefully I can get through that because we've got, these are all yellow onions. I think it's a hybrid. Ugh, so weedy. And then we've also got red onions as, as well because the red onions, again, so you can see, I think it's a red zeppelin. It's not wanting to focus. You can see the red nest right here. Um, goes really good in salsas. All right, and now I get down here. And these are my bell peppers. They're still looking a little bit yellow from being transplanted and whatnot, but they're getting there. That back one looks really good. They will get, they will green up a little bit more. And we also really need more rain, so that doesn't help. Hi, Shadow. Hi, baby. She's my garden buddy. Hi, baby. I know. Oh, you want some pets. Okay. So I've got a mixture of King of the North and purple bell peppers in here. I think I have one other pepper that was random in here that I, I have them all marked, but I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, most of these are seed saved. So originated from Baker Creek, kept the seeds, planted them to start them, moved forward with them. Pretty cool stuff. All right, I'm back towards the gate again because um, I forgot to show you. I needed my coffee and I forgot to show you my uh, my uh, garlic. So here are my here here are wow here is my garlic. Can back up a little bit too. This is our first year doing garlic. <clears throat> Very excited about it. Uh, we most likely will be harvesting it when we, uh, in what, mid, mid July, maybe doesn't look ready yet. Cause I think it needs to dry out a whole lot more before we can. And then we're going to have to hang it somewhere to let it season off so we can, uh, find a good cool spot and keep it in the basement. And then we will have, hopefully we will have garlic for our needs for the remainder of the year. 
Um, okay, so wanted to show you a fun couple fun things. So you can see this right here. Oh, look at potato bugs. Oh, I just gave it away. This is a potato plant. That 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 is a potato plant with seeds on it. I'm gonna them. That is a potato plant. <laughs> that is, they um we have them all over in this little blank area right now. So oh I can't wait to show you that. Some of my stuff is coming up. Okay. So what happens if you have planted potatoes the year before and then you don't always get all of them, right? So one gets left behind and it's going to lay dormant over the winter and it's going to grow again in the spring. Unless you have some ridiculously cold winter, <clears throat> which we could have. But we didn't. We just had a snowy one. So technically, it really didn't la act like an, insulate, an insulation to the garden. Especially since we deep mulch. So you can tell that. We actually found potatoes when I was... I found potatoes when I was weeding. That were probably edible. And they have been there since last year. Pretty crazy, huh? Okay. So now I'm going to move on to... This is my broccoli. I cannot remember the type of broccoli that I planted, but I do know that I have some seed started broccoli, which is a mystery. I think it's Waltham 29 broccoli, I want to say. So all of these I started from seed from Baker Creek. You can see I need to weed. And there's a potato, more potato. <clears throat> and... Then I transplanted them. They are definitely a little bit more uh, cold friendly. So this is why I planted them here because I put my cucumber trellis right here and it'll hopefully um, help shade it a little bit. Okay, so the last four plants are kind of an experiment because they are seed saved. Oh, well, five plants, sorry. They are they are seed saved from the little tiny pods. When you let a broccoli go to seed, it just creates these little tiny pods. And then you I put the pods in this big open bag and just left them there until they all dried out. And then sometime over the winter, I took them all out of the pods and put them in a separate smaller bag and kept them for when I wanted to plant. So this is a spot for marigolds. I just haven't planted it yet. This is a spot where a carrot came back. I just wanted to see what it does. All right, so now we have some, it really needs some water. We have where my cucumber is. So now I've got cucumelons that I planted right here in this little spot. <clears throat> I've got Armenian yard long cucumbers that I planted here. I've got, I'm trying to read the tags here. I think pickle cucumbers, they're just starting to come up, you guys. That's those little guys, those little guys, and those little guys, which will be really good, and then they will trellis, and it really helps save some space in your garden. <clears throat> and now here we have regular slicers, I believe, all the way to over here, and I need to get these watered. I have a few different types. Let's see here. What do I have? We've got something market more cucumber. Oh, Baker Creek. Baker Creek Early Fortune. I've never tried them, so I wanted to try them. Seed saved Boston pickling Boston cucumber. Armenian yard long cucumber. And cucumelon which is like also considered a Mexican sour gherkin. Look at what I see. More breakfast. More breakfast. Mmm, berries. Okay, so now this whole big area is going to be for fall crop stuff. Don't know if I'll need all of it, but it is what it is. It's good that we have it. <clears throat> so like this 
line that I put up right here. I don't know if you can see it because it's really light and yellow. This is going to be where um, in the middle of July, I'm going to plant carrots and radishes here. Give myself a little grace with a fall harvest as well. All right, I've got some zucchini that I planted here. This is Ford Hook zucchini, four of them in this little mound. And here, oh, my little basil plant. What happened? You need some love? Yeah, you need some love. You got squished. So here I have my tomatoes. And I remember specifically that this one right here, I need to come in here and prune the, the bottom branches and, and make sure they're all tied up, but we'll go through that a different video on tomato care. So I've got a spoonful tomato right here, um, a hybrid mer uh, uh, gold tomato, a Baker Creek more stable tomato, um, the, the gold ones. Sorry, I'm not being very technical. And in between each one, I planted some basil. And this is where another really weedy part of my garden, which I need to get to. These right here are tomatillos. You can see them. One of them is laying flat. Unfortunately, I need to stake it up. So more tomatoes, random sunflowers. I leave them. They are beautiful. I might have to take that one out because it's really close. But like, look at that gorgeous thing. I didn't even plant it. That's another thing I still have to do is sprinkle sunflower seeds. The pollinators and the birds love it in the fall too. Okay, so now I have just a variety of some slicer tomatoes. I'm sure you've read of what I've planted in the past. I've also got paste tomatoes. I'm trying one hybrid tomato from Gurney's this year called Easy Sauce. And they're looking pretty darn good. And you can see those chickens are like, why can't I come in? Because you scratch and peck at my plants. They are looking really nice over here. But again, you can see that some of the branches are really low to the ground and I'm just gonna snip those off. And the basil is going to help with um, not just pests and whatnot and, and, and give back to the tomatoes, but I'm also it's gonna get big enough where I can harvest it too. And it, it's just delicious. Hi, Shadow. So now, oops, I just realized I walked past something. So right here, Right by my potato, my, my, you can see I planted it in rows, intentional potatoes. <laughs> um, I did plant some marigolds because it's supposed to help with the potato bugs, even though I need to come by and pick a whole bunch of them off and squish the eggs because they're really gross right now. Um, <clears throat> right here, I'm going to be planting some more lettuce because this lettuce and spinach, as you can see, I've got a couple different varieties. It came back from the seeds that it dropped last year. I mean, that's awesome. I've got food just waiting to be eaten. I've got a beautiful butter head lettuce right there. It's gorgeous. <clears throat> I cannot exactly remember what I'm going to plant here, but I'm going to plant something here. Right here, I planted some new little madu something melons. Needs to be watered. Right here, I've got a spot for some watermelons that I'm going to be planting. I've <clears throat> also got another spot that I'm going to plant right here for some more squash. These beautiful plants are self-seeded from last year. These are, wow, I'm having a brain fart. Nope, not Cosmos. Wow, I'll get back to you on this one. It's a beautiful orange flower, medicinal. Yikes, okay, I, I, I'll get back to you. <clears throat> calendula, 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 that's what this is. It's awesome in teas, it's, you can make salves out of it, um, maybe even tinctures, and it's gorgeous and the pollinators love it. Gotta keep our pollinators happy. So here is my ever, what are you doing, Shadow? <laughs> it is my raspberry patch. And you can see some of them have beautiful buds on them. And some of them don't. 
Some of them will bear fruit in the fall. Some of them, sorry, mosquito on me. Some of them will bear fruit in the summer. So that's, that's what this is. Here's the other side of the potato plants and more marigold seeds that I planted. I seed save those as well. All right, now you can see I have a couple of spots, one, two, three, four. They're not really lined up, but there's a reason for that. Um, for squash, I just need to get it planted. That was one thing I haven't done yet. Really gotta do that. I'm gonna get that done tomorrow because tomorrow I don't work. And then to my surprise, look at this. The kale came back. And then it has a little, it shot off a little, little buddy right here. So, and another potato. That's from like two years ago. That's funny. Because we had potatoes not, not last year, but the year before over here. So um, this kale, what we do when we put the garden to bed and that's why this one's off to the side and the other ones are lined up because I wanted to keep my kale there. <laughs> uh, when we put the garden to bed, what I do because of the type of gardening that I have, which is less disturbance, no tilling, is we just chop down the top of the plant. We leave everything underneath the ground. We leave it for lots of reasons. One of the main reasons is to just help the soil. It helps break down the soil. It helps add to the soil. It's really, it's just, um, and then we, we take off the tops in the spring when we can again, if it's in the way. So right here, we've got a variety of bush beans. Oh, I've got to pick raspberries, look at, or strawberries. You can see all the little pieces of red peeking through. Um, I have, these are all seed saved as well. So I started out uh, with uh, beautiful seeds from the store and then towards the end of the year, you let your beans get really, 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 really big. Let the plant stay there and dry off as long as you can before the snow flies. Pull the plant out, hang them in your basement or somewhere dry or, or bathroom, I don't care, anywhere, and let them dry out further. And then you take the uh, bean pods out of the, or the bean seeds out of the pods and save them for the next year very sustainable really so I've got um Kentucky something or other regular old green beans and then contra beans if that's pronouncing it right I like those they they bloom uh, they're a little bit different kind of fun I've got a purple bush bean they unfortunately don't stay purple when you cook them but they're still really fun <clears throat> yellow beans they stay yellow and then uh dragon tongue beans which are a little bit a bigger flatter pod <clears throat> sorry guys eat, getting eaten alive here and um really 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 gorgeous pods they're like speckled with purple all right i didn't put on any bug spray or anything all right now behind me again is now I'm con oh you know what I put my watermelon here so these are teepee trellises that we made from sticks in our woods I have black coat runner beans Cherokee trail of tear beans and then slippery silk beans oh my gosh I'm getting eating alive here baby and they will trellis beautifully, and these are more of a shelling bean, if you will. <clears throat> um, so you can let these go to town. You don't have to do anything with them. You don't have to pick them until they are humongous, and then you let them dry, or you wait until they're dry in the pod, and then you take them, and then you can use them as like a chili bean, basically a kidney bean. And here is... Some of my tomatillos. These are, by the way, these are purple tomatillos. And I did have to put some, I think it's Dr. I call it Dr. Dead Bugs, but it's something else. Captain Jack's, it's a natural organic pest control um, because I had something just, you can tell, just destroying every, the second year I've done these and they love to eat my 
can hear the owl. They, they love to eat my tomatillo plants. So, and in the middle of both of these, I have watermelon. Now I can't remember what I was going to do over there, but it was a different, I think maybe a squash. No, the squash is for in the middle. I'm going to do something over there. We'll figure it out. All right. <clears throat> now moving on before I show you this, there's my coffee. You can see this chain link fence. We, we rescued this from a junk pile use tea posts and we hang it up every year for pea pods. Now, I didn't get the pea pods in the ground in time before it got a little warmer and pea pods don't like warm, like hot. So um, that's gonna be another second crop. We love pea pods for snacking on in the garden. And then also we will freeze several bags of them and use them in stir fry during the year. So, all right, next up we have my few different types of cabbage. So I've got um, Chinese cabbage right here, which is finally now acclimating high shadow to being transplanted. Looking pretty good. Needs to be weeded again. Um, I also have, I think it's son of Yukonuba or <laughs> I don't remember. It's supposed to be really good. This is the green cabbages that you see. It's supposed to be really good for, um, storage cabbage, which I'm really excited to try. I keep a few cabbages um, in, a, in a refrigerator for a few months after we harvest them so we can have some freshness during the winter. And the same thing, I've got purple cabbage as well. So, and this, I think it's Red Express. Oh my goodness, look at all the strawberries, guys. Okay, and what we have planted in the middle, <clears throat> is our asparagus that we're letting go to seed. Um, asparagus and, and strawberries make good companion planting. Walk you over to, well, there's another spot for marigolds that I have. And eventually this needs to be weeded too really badly. But, um, okay, so this eventually we're going to have big logs that encase our strawberry patch because it is, uh, it will take over your garden. This whole thing would become a strawberry patch if you let it. Okay, set down my coffee. Give you a little bit more. Woo, sorry. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see behind us, we have this giant tarp. And what we're doing is we're trying to kill all the weeds and all the vegetation underneath this. This whole big area used to be our chicken coop and our chicken run. Eventually, this will be an add-on to the garden. This is where they're getting through, by the way. Um, hi, goats and pigs. So this is um, going to be something. This is going to be more of a, a ornamental herb, you know, all that good stuff. So you can see I forgot about a few flowers. Oops. So, um, right now it is just where I have my herbs. This is bee balm. When this blooms, it will be fantastic for the, uh, pollinators. I have Roman chamomile that I started from seed that I planted down there. Some of that, that reseeded and came back from the year before. Um, I think this is borage. I think my borage self seeded because it's kind of that fuzzy plant. And then we also have, I planted some more echinacea. We'll see if that takes. <clears throat> I've got some different pansies. And salvia, I want to say, that I just threw in here. Honestly, I probably started too many and I didn't know what to do with it. So it's here. Um, in between the mess of the weeds, we've got dill. We've got more lemon balm. We've got lemon balm from last year. We've got random <laughs> sunflowers. We've got dill that came back from last year. I'm trying to bring back to life some of the parsley that I planted. This is parsley that came back that's going to seed. And then random beautiful flowers. More, <clears throat> more, um, sunflowers. And then I put some more dill back there and some random flowers behind there. Um, this will fill in nicely. We've got, <clears throat> oops, I almost squished you. We've got some peppermint. We've got some rosemary. We've got some sage. Chives, of course. Thyme and oregano that came back from last year as well. 
The nice thing about a lot of things like thyme and oregano is you can actually use them in your animal waters and it will help give them an antibacterial property that, that's beneficial to them. Really? You have to be the star of the show? Do you? Do you have to be the star of the show? Hmm? Yeah, you do. So, that is my garden. And oh, we got another spot for some random flowers. <clears throat> if we had one more, one more tarp, we'd have this covered too, but we're just gonna work on this one first and then shift it over, depending on if we have the mulch available. You can see I planted beans over there last year, but we're not gonna do anything this year. So that's, that's the garden in a nutshell. It is my happy place. I have um, a dumpster dive table. <laughs> Thank you, husband. And uh, I put the umbrella up here and I am in my happy place. I have my, I can have friends out here. I can, we can eat dinners out here. We used to have a table on the deck. We never used it. I moved it out here. We use it all the time. So. Yeah. Hi, Roni. So just something really special about sitting here. And I, I sometimes I get over, I just got a bug in my mouth, get a little overwhelmed. Cause it's a lot, but it also, it brings me peace and it brings me joy. And my love language is through food. And it just compounds when I know that I was also part of the growing process for that food. And uh, <clears throat> we will make a lot of good things from all of this. We, um, we keep the onions in our, in our basement over the winter and we have onions. We, won't, we don't have to buy onions very often. Hopefully we won't have to buy garlic this year. Um, I'm making pickles this year. I do that every other year. Um, I am not pickling cucumber or not, wow. Uh, jalapenos as, as I told you because I have enough from last year. I am um, not making sauerkraut. I don't think. We might, maybe we'll make a smaller batch but we still have a dozen jars. Maybe we'll make another one. We'll see. But yes I kind of have figured out a nice little rotation of how much we use things. We definitely use pasta sauce and crushed tomatoes and salsa. And I'm excited to try with the just one long row of the tomatoes because hopefully we won't have any blight issues then. Keep the airflow going. Just a peaceful, beautiful morning full of mosquitoes at the garden. <laughs> Hi, big guy. <clears throat> How's it going? You got something in your mouth. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Right out of bed, no makeup, nothing. That's pretty normal for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support and your love and your kindness and just grace and patience when it comes to this whole process. <clears throat> if there's something that you guys want to learn about that you want to see more of, less of, let me know in the comments below and share this video with people that you think um, will like it. Love to get their feedback too. So excited to do some fun things this year, grow a lot of food and bring you on, bring you with on the process. <laughs> so take care. Many, many blessings. Have a good one. Bye.